So we've just come back from fashion shoots with celebrity fashion designer Alita Herbst uh, in London and Spain. And for that, Photix was kind enough to uh, let us try out the Photix Indra 500 system, um, something that was kind of new for me um, as a speed light guy, a guy who's known for um, kind of running on the fly, traveling a lot. I want to fit everything into my carry-on. And so branching out to the world of larger strobes um, was kind of was something I hesitated about, uh, mainly just because of the weight and the size of a strobe like this. So let's look, there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, but first let me just set this up and kind of show you how it works. There are other competitor big strobes on the market um, that I'm not as much a fan of. Uh, some of those that are really popular have a built-in battery and they really promote and market that as an advantage. Um, I specifically think the, the design of a separate battery um, that, that hangs separate from the strobe head is, is preferable. In my situation, I find a lot of times a, um, a little oversized um, strobe that is enlarged to fit a battery inside um, is harder to pack into my carry-on. Uh, and it's also, um, because it's rigid, there's not, you can't put it into different pockets. And also it's just top heavy. And one thing that I've had happen many times um, is light stands, even without umbrellas, um, blowing over, leaning, being caught in the nick of time, um, some harrowing experiences. And so I tend to like as, l as little weight as possible on top of my stand. And in fact, when you have a battery, um, like the Indra 500 battery pack here, um, it's, it's nice because you can literally use it as a sandbag or as an additional weight. It's not very heavy, but it adds a little additional weight if you hang that at the bottom of your light stand. So not only is it not top heavy, but it's actually adding stability. And three groups, A, B, and C, uh, which becomes important if you're using the entire Photix system. And this is really Photix's huge strength. Um, and I think what sets it apart really uniquely in our industry, um, if you're looking for high quality, high end light products, I don't know of another system that does what Photix does uh, in terms of bringing everything together. So what I mean by that is that Photix also has the Metros Plus system. Um, I'll just talk about this for a minute in and of itself. Um, like anything that I've found designed by uh, Photix, it just it feels like a tank in your hand. Now that could be a drawback. This is a slightly larger flash um, than my uh, SB900s and SB910s um, and, and their more recent uh, flashes. So just slightly bigger and maybe a little bit heavier, but it's got this kind of rubberized, heavier plastic um, that feels like a tank. Um, similar materials that go into this that I just, I love the build quality. Um, the menus on this are uh, simple. Um, in fact, the, the Photix Metros Plus, you could buy these flashes for Nikon, for Canon, or for Sony. Uh, but make sure that you get the correct flash unit that, that Photix makes for your specific camera system. Um, you can only, this for instance, will only work with Nikon, and I'm a Nikon system guy. Now, that's something to point out about the, the um, Indra, actually, is really nice, is that this unit is ready for Sony, Canon, or Nikon. Built in, you don't have to get a separate flash. You know, I'm not gonna have to upgrade this if I start using a different brand of camera. Uh, I can actually use this with Sony, Canon, and Nikon as long as I'm using um, something like this uh, also really well designed Photix Odin controller that I have on top of my camera here. Um, this is specific to Nikon. If I'm using this, then I can control not only my Photix Metros flashes now, but my large Indra 500 as well. What they, this gives me the ability to do uniquely from other systems is to combine small flashes and my strobe into photo shoots like you'll see we did in London and Spain. That's a huge positive thing because what a lot of people don't realize is a flash like this is super powerful as a backlight. When you take a, a flash and expose it properly for your subject and then simply move that flash behind your subject, when it's coming direct toward camera, that flash suddenly looks about two stops brighter. It's just one of the properties of light. Um, so you suddenly have to turn your um, flash down by 
four, you know, four times less power. Um, so a very small amount of the power that you would need to use it as a key light, it can be used as a backlight. That means that you can get one or two flashes like this at $399 a pop instead of a $600 flash. It's maybe not even made quite up to standard with this. Um, and you can use several of these in multi-light setups. They don't need to be that powerful. I can just have my one incredibly powerful strobe as my key light and then combine them with this in what is a really unique, really malleable system. From a traveling point of view, um, we carried a separate case, uh, a separate um, carry-on size case in order to travel with this whole system, which is a little drawback in my mind. I've always packed, um, and, and we, you can look at some of our tutorials on how we pack for travel, since we also travel with three small children for most of our shoots and projects overseas. But we usually pack all of our gear in one carry-on. And so having that extra carry-on was um, a little bit of a hassle. Uh, but I think if I wasn't as concerned about carrying backups and things, I could fit this into my, um, at least one Indra into my carry-on um, and just kind of parse down the system. Let's look at some of the accessories to these lights and uh, see what we used on the shoots in London and what we really liked um, and maybe what, what for us wasn't as convenient.